Hello friends and family, and welcome to our boring meditation stuff for August 28th, Friday. <laughs> Happy Friday to you if you actually have uh, a work week behind you. Um, today I wanted to talk about the idea of um, at it's attachment. The idea is attachment but it's sort of um, advanced attachment. The idea is that we can become attached to things which are inherently kind of good. Um, they certainly seem good to us. And um, it's a, from the position of a beginning meditator, it can often seem like a bit of a paradox or it can seem like all of the teachings by from all the different teachers be they religious leaders or meditation teachers whoever um, that they're all the same right they all have kind of the same structure and they all have kind of the same uh, system so there's usually there's usually a book and there's usually a leader, and there's usually a language that the books were written in, um, and then there's usually a set of principles, and then there's kind of this um, army of believers who go out and they present the, the teachings and the principles to other people, and often, <laughs> The principles and the teachings, they look very similar to all these other schools of thought. And this structure, um, it, it can be seen in Judaism, it can be seen in Tibetan Buddhism, it can be seen in Islam, um, it can be seen in Theravada Buddhism, it can be seen in Hinduism. Um, they, they tend to, to follow this this shape, right? There's someone or sometimes some group of people who kick this thing off and then there's a special language, whether it's Hebrew or Arabic or Tibetan or Pali or Sanskrit. And then there are a group of teachers and they go out. They're usually priests, monks, something like that. Um, and they teach people and then they lay down these rules and the rules are usually kind of similar um, Don't say mean things and don't hurt people blah 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 and I think that um, That there is a real Understandable concern that people have with um the different schools of meditation in particular. So, I mean, religion, <laughs> leave that aside entirely. I'm not interested in that. But um, meditation has all these different flavors, right? There are modern flavors. So you get it in an app or you get it from uh, a yoga studio or a friend teaches it to you or you learn it on TV. Um, and then there are the modern historical variations so um, you learn it in a temple, but a modern temple. You learn it from a pundit. You learn it in school. Um, you learn it from someone who has taken like a weekend course <laughs> um, in teaching meditation. And people are fairly comfortable with that, I think. I think the idea that a school teacher or um, some other relatively innocent member of the community, maybe a librarian, I don't know, um, is teaching meditation. Oh, good. Like, I know her. I know I can trust her. She's a friend of the family. Um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, honestly, if the person in that role is the one who ends up teaching meditation, um, as long as they are trained in meditation. Meditation teachers, to teach meditation, serious meditation, requires tens, plural, tens of thousands of hours of practice. 
you really have to have gone through the difficult phases of meditation for this to become a safe thing for you to teach to other people. So you don't go to India for a year or two, meditate a whole bunch, and then come back to California or wherever you're from, Michigan, and start teaching meditation. That's not safe. Um, people who teach meditation should have years and years and years of practice behind them. And the difficulty with this is that we often find that people become attached to the systems under which meditation is taught. So be that Hinduism, be that some particular sect of Buddhism, um, Jainism, I remember like wherever the meditation is coming from originally, then people can get fairly attached to that. And that there's certainly um, truth to this in the practices of Anapana and Vipassana, where I've seen people speak of Pali as though it's some sort of magical, <laughs> perfect language, right? Like, oh, the language spoken by the Buddha must have been a perfect language. I don't think so, right? Like, languages are kind of like fungus or bacteria. Like, they're just a morphing blob of things all the time. It's almost miraculous that they work at all. Um, but I don't think there was ever a perfect language. Like, these are, whether you believe in a language instinct or whether you, because this is still a debate of biology, right? The language instinct on one side and language as a human invention on the other side, or you know, maybe some combination of the two in the middle. Um, but ultimately, since humans themselves are biological constructions, language is a biological construction. And there's no point at which is like you can hold up the language and say, herald this, the, the perfect language, right? Perfectly done, ah, yes, perfectly done. <laughs> um, they're always in flux. And so I think that it is important to be aware that even very experienced meditation teachers, um, even people with uh, a lot of experience with practices, um, whatever they may be, whichever culture they may be coming from, whichever country they may be coming from, whichever language they might be in, um, can fall into this trap of being attached to this thing which has given them so much benefit, whether that's zazen or whether that's prayer or whether that's anapana and vipassana, um, that it is possible to become too attached to these as ideas. Um, even if they are supposed to be methods of <laughs> removing attachment. Um, and that's what is important to focus on when you encounter this situation. You know, like, oh, this person's really obsessed with meditation. Um, don't worry about that. Don't worry about their problems and their attachments. Worry about yourself. We should worry about ourselves. I should worry about myself and my meditation practice. Oh, okay, am I able to follow my breath? Because this little exercise tells me how distracted I am, how much my mind is wandering, how um, upset I am under just under the surface in life. Um, and it's good to be aware of these things. And so we can do that individually without being too concerned about the overall structures and the overall systems under which these tools are taught. The tools themselves are incredibly simple. Follow the breath. Okay, follow the breath. Done. <laughs> Feel sensations in the body. That's Vipassana is basically that. There's not much more to it than that. Um, there's a whole explanation as to why is that useful? What are you doing? What are the ways that you can make mistakes in the process? But ultimately, observe the sensations in the body. That's Vipassana. Um, and so if anapana and vipassana can be taught in a single sentence, then we're like, what are all these structures around them? Um, with 
any other system, right, um, with, let's say, Islam or Judaism or Christianity um, or Zen, like, why are there structures at all? Why are there groups of people? Why are they getting together? Why do they build buildings? What are they accomplishing? And um, it's important to remember that all of them are ephemeral, right? Um, including those which teach the methods of discovering ephemerality. <laughs> Is ephemerality a word? Um, the, the temporary nature, the ephemeral nature, um, the constant change in all things that we're observing in meditation, that that applies to the structures, the buildings, the people who are teaching the meditation itself. Um, and it's a little bit difficult to kind of unravel that sometimes, but, so you don't need to worry about it so much. But it can be helpful if you find, oh, I'm surprised that the meditation teacher is saying this thing. And like they seem a little attached to the practice or to the system which is teaching the practice or to the building <laughs> in which uh, the meditation is being taught. Um, then you can maybe try to be patient with them and um, try to uh, refocus your attention on exploring that ephemeral nature yourself using these um, like kind of simple one-liner approaches. It's not anything I'm saying, but um, you'll come up with your own one-liner explanations of what these meditation practices are in time as you practice them more yourself. That's enough for today about attachment. Um, I hope everyone has taken good tear, good tear? good care of themselves and of everyone around them. Um, I hope you all have a good weekend. <laughs>